everyone. Welcome to my channel. This is Full Haunted's channel. Uh, I talk about like natural hair and stuff like that. And today I'll be bringing on Camille. She's a professional natural hair stylist. And I thought it would be really cool to bring her on because she's a professional for one. And I don't really know too much about natural other than the things that I've already like learned myself and decided to share with you guys. So I thought it'd be great to bring someone who has specialized in it, been taught it, does it every day, does it on different patterns, different hair. So. Yeah, come over here and introduce yourself, yeah. say what you do and how long you've been doing it for. Yeah, okay. <laughs> thank you for having me. My name is Camille Janae. I am based in Sacramento, California. I am a salon owner, textured hair specialist and educator, I'm a salon owner of Mahogany and Rose, and I have been licensed for about four years. Yay. So I know the burning question that a lot of people have seen is like, the no oils, no butters, what am I supposed to do? Is it a challenge? Is it a lifestyle change? So do you want to... Spill the tea yes. <laughs> so we can educate the people yes. on what it is exactly. Yeah, yeah. So the no oils, no butters is just kind of like a bite-sized piece that's been taken from a larger conversation. Right. And really the the main point we're trying to get across to folks is the importance of hydration right. and how we've been conditioned and taught to use a lot of raw oils and butters and it's actually preventing us from being able to get our hair hydrated. So that kind of sparked, you know, wanting people to shift their hair care practices and the no oils and no butters was at the core of that. Right. But yeah, unfortunately, sometimes that became the focus right. versus the larger aspect. Right. Okay. So when people are saying, don't put oils on your hair, it's raw oils that people are missing that's the that's the main i feel like segment that they're missing of yes. the no oils no butters right like raw oils butters. right because there are some products that are formulated well, well that happen to have some oils and butters right. in them but so yeah right. when they're in their raw form or even sometimes when products are heavily formulated with mm -hmm. oils and butters it can be preventative of hydration okay yeah. so then could you kind of explain what that does when you're putting oils on top of your hair and why people would think that it's moisturizing yeah. or trapping water and moisture mm -hmm. in when in reality it's actually drying out your hair more because water evaporates, right? So. Yes. I feel like you <laughs> have the tea on it. I feel like you have the terminology to fully explain why people are kind of are misconstrued about the idea. Yeah, well I think a lot of it comes from that it was such a traditional practice for right. us. So we don't question things that our grandma told us to do and right. our mom yeah. told us to do. But, so the idea I would say, we know that in nature or in general, oil and water don't mix. If you right. put it in a bowl, it would separate, right. Right. Um, water would, yeah, it would sit on top. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we have the concept that, okay, well then people go, okay, well I'm not using it to moisturize, I'm using it to trap in the moisture. Mm -hmm. However, water is going to evaporate Eventually, whether, yeah. It, yeah, whether you put oil on top of the hair or not. So all that's happening is now you have oil sitting on top of the hair without any water in it. Right. Um, and then it's hard to wash that out and then you're layering more oil and water cannot get through the Once oil. Once the oil is sitting on top, so the water is kind of just slipping off. Completely and slipping off. And you're thinking you're moisturizing your hair with the water, but because the oil and the yes. product builds up that's building on top of the oil, is there's like, it's kind of redundant. Right. right. I don't know if redundant is the right word, but it's like, Counterintuitive. Yes. Yeah. Completely. And then what's the challenge with that is then people go, oh, well, no, all that's happening is it's low porosity. Right. So the hair's behavior looks right. like it's low porosity, right. but really it's that it's become waterproof, right. essentially. So right. water's just rolling right off the hair, right. which is not low porosity. It's it just, at all. Right. Mm -hmm. You just got to clean your hair yes. and stop using oil. Exactly. Right? Okay. Exactly. Okay. So I feel like... For the most part, everyone has gotten the gist of that. But if you have like more questions, Camille also has and talks about hair on her socials as well. So I'll make sure to include all her information in the description and on the screen as well. So if you guys got more questions about oils and butters and you still don't get it, she got you. Okay, so the next question was, why is it important to wash weekly? And why, like, I feel like it's ingrained in us to wash your hair once a month or two weeks because I feel like that was kind of the norm when you would go to the salon or like do a press and curl you go every two weeks or whatever the case may be but then like back when youtubers were like on like big natural hair youtubers and that outbreak was happening we were kind of like taught to be like okay let's just wash your hair once a month because like for some reason people thought dirty hair grows I don't get it <laughs> I don't get it and it's not to say that that is like 
you're completely wrong. I understand why people thought that way because I did too. She did too. Yeah. So, but I feel like you can speak on why washing weekly is a better habit to have for your, your hair. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's really thinking of us cleansing our hair as another hygienic practice, just right. like taking a shower. Right. And what it comes down to, so usually we say weekly is just a general rule of thumb. For right. some folks with their lifestyle, they might actually need to wash a little more frequently. Right. Um, but that's like a good baseline. I would say listening to your scalp. So mm -hmm. most people's scalp does start itching by day six, day seven. Right. And that's your scalp getting irritated and it's ready for everything sitting on it to be washed out. So even those that are saying, oh, you know, I'm just using minimal product. Why would I need to wash weekly? Well, you still got environmental buildup. You still got biological logical buildup your hair is producing sebum and oils and all of that is just sitting on the surface and it's got to be rinsed off um just just like our body so even if you're not putting anything on your body you've got environmental buildup biological buildup and you gotta wash that off right. yeah yeah so what we were saying earlier um when i was like getting my hair cut <laughs> um <laughs> is that like you treat it like if you were cleaning anything else. So like when she was saying like your body and stuff, like I say, or I think to myself, like if you were gonna clean your room, you clean it weekly or however you clean your room. If you don't clean your room, I don't think that's on you. But <laughs> <laughs> like if you would wait to clean your room or do your house, like, you know, when you do like a spring cleaning, you do a deep clean and that takes a really long time. But if you were to maintain it on a weekly basis, daily basis, it doesn't take that long. So when we dread, doing our wash days, the reason why we dread it and why it takes so long is because we're waiting too long in between yeah. to wash our hair. So if we were to wash it more frequently, then it wouldn't take as long to do our wash days yeah. because your hair wouldn't be so matted up or it wouldn't be so dry, it wouldn't be so tangled. Right. So yeah. And then the other thing to add to that kind of piggybacking off of the first question is that because water evaporates, right. that's the other reason you want to do it weekly because to replenish, replenish like the water. Plant. Yeah. yeah, or even like your body, you don't drink right. water today and be like, right. I'm good for the week. Like, exactly. You know, you're not yeah. gonna drink again. Right. So it's basically giving your hair that drink of water. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, how can we choose high quality products? It does it matter, and like, how can you tell yeah. what to choose from? Because I know that you explicitly said that you didn't like certain brands because of whatever ingredients that they might have. But how can the like modern the consumer tell or differentiate what's supposed to be bought versus what's not and yeah. like what's within our budget as well. Right. That's a really great question and it's a tricky question because I'm not a stylist that will say, oh, all products at Target are bad. Mm -hmm. I actually use some products in the salon that are sold at Target. Mm -hmm. It really comes to down to how they're formulated mm -hmm. and that can be tricky because we don't expect the everyday person to understand how products are formulated right. so it's difficult because my easiest answer is that it's helpful to partner with a professional mm -hmm. who can recommend products okay. and finding a professional that is open to recommending products that are going to fit within your budget mm -hmm. um, that way you're not having to become a scientist or right. a chemist to and break down what the ingredients are sometimes even the formulation of ingredients aren't set on the bottle because there's not there's no space for that right. but how things are formulated even if it's like ingredients are sat at a certain like point mm -hmm. on the ingredient list you don't know the percentage and yeah. yeah so i understand that you think is there a different or alternative way i guess it kind of leads into my next question too but would you say there's an alternative way to know um or what do you think is just the only answer at least what you're saying is to partner with the reason I say that is because even us as professionals, we're always learning about when products are reformulated. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times our expertise comes more from practical application. Right. So sometimes I can show you better than I can tell you this works on your hair this way. Mm -hmm. And even sometimes I don't know the scientific breakdown of a formulation. Right. So thinking with that concept, if a licensed hairstylist doesn't know the scientific cosmetic formulation then it's hard for anyone yeah it really is so um it's challenging because i want to be mindful that not everyone has access to a curly hair specialist um if you can even just get a virtual consultation mm -hmm. um but yeah it's it's tricky yeah, yeah. Okay. so i guess that leads into my next question of what should you consider before choosing a hairstylist best for you and how should you find them? Yeah. Yeah, because I feel like that's people's biggest gripe. It's like, although they've seen maybe what you've said online, 
you're like in a different state or like right. you're across the world. So baby, how do they find a hairstylist that will fit them that's also agreeing with what you're saying? Because there there are some stylists who still believe that, you know, oil on your scalp or like put oils on your hair. Right. So not everyone is in agreement. So how can how can we find hairstylists and like what should we consider so that they're best partnered with people who can work with them? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is finding someone that you feel aligned with. So I'm saying everything I'm saying because that's what I believe in. But if you don't believe in that, you know, finding a stylist that aligns with what you do believe in, you know, versus like, well, I want someone that believes what Camille believes, but if you're not feeling it, right, then it doesn't yeah. really matter. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, so I mean, this day and age, Instagram is the easiest way. Now I feel cautious saying that because as we're recording this, Instagram, Instagram is down. down. <laughs> But that has become the easiest way to find stylists because it acts as like our live portfolio. Right, like a directory Um, almost. Yeah, a directory in the sense of, you know, searching hashtags, searching within your um, location. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hashtag your city curl specialist, curly salon, curly hair stylist, Mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, But what to look for, you want to look for someone that has clients whose hair looks like yours right. or as close to yours as possible. Right, so kind of like their own portfolio within Instagram or like on their website. Or their website, like, yeah. So you want to feel seen, right? you okay. know? So even if they're saying they're a curl specialist but no one's hair looks it's similar like to yours, right. I would be cautious with that. Right. You don't want to yeah. take that chance and be a guinea pig for them <laughs> to practice on. That happens, yeah. you know? And um, yeah, or if you're seeing some that are slightly similar, but you're not sure, don't be afraid to reach out to stylists. You know, if they have email or however they prefer to be contacted saying, hey, I'm interested in your services. Would you happen to have other photos of, you know, curl types similar to mine? Because sometimes we don't always post all of our work online. So if you're like, well, this is the only stylist within a hundred mile radius, Mm -hmm. you know, reach out to them and ask um, what other work they have. But yeah, looking through their website and looking through their Instagram, because also within captions or how they post on their stories, seeing if their approach and philosophy is in alignment with how you'd like your hair to be cared for. So there's a platform, an educational platform called Cut It Kinky, um, and it's two stylists uh, based on the East Coast. Excellent education specifically of how to cut and style Mm -hmm. tight curly hair. So within their education, they've created a directory of stylists that have gone through their training. So yeah, that's blackcurlmagic.com. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then she'll send me links, so I'll put it in the... Yes. You already know. Okay. And that includes stylists internationally as well, not just within the U.S. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Okay, Mm -hmm. so I'll definitely make sure I put that up. How do you think influencers and hairstylists can find common ground on the spread of natural hair care, information, or misinformation? Yeah, that That's is tricky. I feel like within all fields, like I know I see that a lot with skincare, like estheticians and skin influencers, like kind of like, oh, well, da 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 da. Because like influencers find things that they enjoy and then they want to talk about it and then they build an audience of like who enjoys like collaborating and building that community. Yeah. But at the same time, I understand like some people spread misinformation and it leads to like this really widespread idea of like what people think. It's supposed to be like when it's truly not. Yeah. So how can we find that common ground where we're not like stepping all over each other or right. like regurgitating information from like someone who's paid money to go to school versus like an influence. Yeah. You know? So I feel like that's one thing I've tried to understand. I guess sometimes at one point I took a step back from like talking about natural hair yeah. just so that I could learn myself. Like, well, there's some things that I don't know that right. I'm gonna stop talking about because I don't want to keep being in that cycle of spreading misinformation if I don't know what I'm talking about clearly but I get at the same time like at some point we all didn't really know what was going on with natural hair we kind of just all took the leap together which was great in the beginning but now that we know better I feel like it's important to listen to natural hair stylists too Mm -hmm. so I'm like how can we find common ground where it's not like or kind of at war with each other yeah that is a huge question I think Hmm, it's hard to say because you know I want people to have the freedom to express however they want to I feel like it's helpful when influencers or content creators come from a standpoint of like you were exactly how you were phrasing it this is what I enjoy this is what has worked for me I think when there's an emphasis on that versus hey this is how to grow your hair and when the tone is like I'm an authority on this subject versus I'm an authority on my own hair and this is what has worked for my hair. Um, And I 
I also think it's beautiful if influencers are regurgitating what stylists have said because it helps to reinforce that, right. you know, right. information that's right. being put out there. Um, and then I think for, I'll speak, well, let me not speak for all hair stylists, but <laughs> at least from what I see, <laughs> you know, us bridging the gap by just coming from an understanding that influencers are sharing what they love mm -hmm. and no one is intentionally trying to misinform right, people. Yeah. Um, I think for us hairstylists, I know with consumers there's a lot of uh, apprehension because we come across as like upset or angry or snarky mm -hmm. and I will speak for myself that sometimes it comes from I feel for clients coming in being extremely discouraged, yeah. not liking their hair, trying everything they've seen on YouTube and just yeah, not working, not working right. wanting to cut it all off. So that's where I'll say where my frustration will come from is like, mm -hmm. I want to cut through the misinformation because I want people to love their hair again. Right. I want them to enjoy it and also see that it doesn't have to be difficult or right. time consuming. Right. Um, so yeah, I think the gap can just be bridged by conversations like this happening mm -hmm. um, and understanding that we want joy to be surrounding here. I really right. think that that's, that's a common that's ground. A yeah, yeah, like we yeah. want everyone to enjoy it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. What do you think? I mean, oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm kind of like, that's why I had to take a step back, but I think I started seeing more things that were helpful to me to like, you can still post, or I can still post educational content as an influencer without feeling like I, I'm i like lost in the sauce with like, okay, well, I'm not a professional, but I still want to be heard because I know at least a little bit what I'm talking about because yeah. it's worked for me and I know it's worked for other people, but at the same time, I don't want to feel like I'm like shutting people out Especially if I have like a certain level of community or like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. with TikTok, I have a lot of followers on TikTok. I don't want to spread information. It was just counterintuitive to like what you guys are trying to do. Yeah. So I want to make sure like, okay, I want to learn from you guys. Right. But at the same time, I don't want to feel like I'm regurgitating information that I just saw. Yeah. I just, without crediting you guys. Because mm -hmm. I see that happen a lot too. So I'm like, I feel like that's unfair. So I'm like trying huh. to, how can I find that middle ground of like, I still want to share and educate Every, literally every black yeah. woman that feels like they're going through a struggle with their natural hair without feeling like I'm doing too much. Like, girl, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, you can go to school, but at the same time, this I could just be me in my head. So, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's understandable yeah. to have those thoughts, but I think all the voices are needed because I'm coming from a technical standpoint and right. wanting to show people how to do something, but you're an inspiration, That's you know? Too, so yeah. it's like you're taking the information that I provide and showing people how they can apply it and someone can aspire to see like, oh, she has tight curls like me and, and it's, it's working for her. Yes. That's what tips that point for her. Yeah. Yeah, that does. That does make a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so the last question is, is there any last advice you would give to struggling naturals? I know that's a very wide, open-ended type of question, but if you had any words to share. Yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. You said to an overwhelmed natural? Struggling natural. Struggling. Okay. And then my mind went to, yeah, you'd be overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, you would be overwhelmed. <laughs> struggling. Um, I mean, I sound like a broken record trying to seek advice from a professional. That way, I would say using YouTube as a source of inspiration, especially like different styles or aspiring for someone's like length goals or um, even cutting mm -hmm. shapes, things like that. Um, that way, if you're the reason I advise partnering with a professional is because someone can offer product recommendations and technique recommendations specific to your hair um, because what I use and did for Bola today may not work for someone else out there. Right. Um, so, you know, approaching it from that standpoint, um, if access directly to a stylist is difficult, a lot of us share a lot of free information online. Um, so being able to, you know, watch our Instagram videos, IG lives, like she said, Twitter threads, things like that to piece together the information the best you can. And if you are able to access us via, via virtual consultation or the best being an in-person uh, in appointment, mm -hmm. doing it that way. And having the mindset that if you're unlearning a lot of different practices, that it's going to take time. Yeah. So the biggest thing I would say too is like being patient with yourself. A lot of times 
people that you look up to as your hair goals, their hair didn't always look that way. Right. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> it this way. And the thing is, I always say about that as like I'm really happy that stylists are offering. I mean, it's a lot of time and work to like put out free information because you guys are doing it out of the kindness of your heart. But like to put it out there because we didn't have stylists. Like if you've been natural for forever, you know how like much of a struggle it was to like figure it out on your own and use YouTube as like a way to just figure it out. But now that there's hairstylists that are willing to like put out free information and then like they're open to like giving me recommendations on other natural hairstylists and specialists yeah. across the US and yeah. even internationally, I feel like that helps cut through like the time that it took us to like yes. figure it out. Yes. So I've been natural since 2011 and I just got it together, I wanna say maybe 2015. Yeah. Four or five years of like figuring it out. I would've locked right. my head. I would've did something cause I was just like, yeah. But if you're a struggling natural, then I definitely say like what she's saying, partnering with, uh, hair specialist so that you can figure it out. Right, yeah, that's a great point because I will say for me, that's where my passion comes from. I've yeah. been natural since 2009. I've done any and everything to my right. hair and I was making YouTube videos. Right. So I feel like part of it is trying to reverse the misinformation that I put out there. <laughs> Now that I know better, I can right. share that information. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, exactly as she said, like it's cutting down that learning curve of right. trying to figure all of this nonsense out. Once you have the right products and learn the techniques, that's already going to be a learning process. So why not cut out all of that other misinformation and get down to practicing and getting to know your hair better? Right. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I know that I and I mean I presented to you guys on Instagram stories like. A question box so that you can ask a curly hair specialist which is Camille questions but because Instagram was down today um, I just couldn't get to them so if you guys ever have questions like I said you can ask Camille um, she's really active on Twitter Instagram mm -hmm. she goes on IG lives a lot uh -huh. so yeah you guys you guys can always ask her there's different um, curly hair specialists that are active on Twitter too like Jessica Kiyomi, mm -hmm. and there's another one, I forget her name. Oh, there's a bunch. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot, there's yes. a lot. But if I find her handles, I will link them below as yeah. well. So then thank you, Camille, yes. that was it. Yes. Thank you guys, like I said, I'll link all her information below so that you guys have access to it. And then all the other natural hairstylists and specialists that are openly sharing information as well. If you don't already follow me and you're new to this channel, make sure that you subscribe and hopefully I'll put out more videos like this. Um, like this video. Yeah, I don't know what else to say on the intro, but that's Thank it. You. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for you. having me. <laughs>